Sunday after Pentecost is called the Holy Trinity. It reminds us that we worship only one God, and that God has revealed himself as three distinct persons. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. And we know that God created us, redeemed us by the blood of Jesus Christ, and has made us holy by the work of the Holy Spirit. Today we begin our devotional worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Almighty God and our Father, dwelling in majesty and filling creation with your spirit, reveal your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Cleanse us from doubt and fear, and send us boldly into all the world to worship you. With your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, living and reigning now and forever. The first reading is recorded in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. 
And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse and the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the water swarm and with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is recorded in Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your, in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him 
to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend to the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. And a reading from St. Matthew chapter 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus said in the gospel lesson for today, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Boy, do we have our we work cut out for us. I wonder if that's what Peter was thinking when he heard the words of our Lord, go make disciples of all nations. That's quite a work, kind of like a huge endeavor. Maybe all 11 of those apostles were scratching their heads wondering, how are we supposed to accomplish that? It seems to be an impossible task, but at the same time, you're facing so many challenges. At the time that Jesus was ascending into heaven, Peter and the apostles were not in any popularity contest at all. In fact, being associated with Jesus was something that received persecution. And even for you and I today, being a Christian is not always the most welcoming thing in our society. When you look at the society today, there's people with facing a lot of problems. Some are full of anxiety and depression. There's chaos going on. Some people are angry. And there's a lot of strife. And sometimes it seems that the very fabric of our society can be falling apart, coming unraveled. And as disciples of our Lord, we do, we do have an enormous task to make disciples today of all nations. And when Jesus told them to do that, it is not just their task, it's ours as well. And I like the way Jesus began that statement. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus has the power, the authority, to commission those disciples to make disciples. I remember a story in the Bible when there was a guy, he was a centurion. And he had a servant who was sick, and he sent word for Jesus to come and, and make his servant well again. And on the way, Jesus was coming, and the centurion went out to, to meet Jesus. And he said to the guy, said, the centurion said to Jesus, Lord, don't trouble yourself to come under my roof. 
because I'm not worthy to have you come under. Just say the word. And he talked about his own people under him. He says, you know, I tell them what to do, and they do it. So you just say the word, and my servant will be well. He recognized that Jesus had the authority and the power to speak. And that's what Jesus does have. When God said in Genesis, let there be, and there was, Jesus showed that power in his own life when he spoke to the wind and the waves, and they were calm. Or when he spoke to a dead man, Lazarus, come forth, and a dead man came out. Jesus has the authority behind this command to go forth and make disciples of all nations. And making disciples and baptizing them as Jesus has urged us to do. And you know, there's no shortage of people in the world today. When Jesus said make disciples, he didn't say make disciples of one nation. He said make disciples of all nations. And when you think of that word nations, think of all the people that come under that heading. You've got men and women. You've got elderly. You've got little children. You've got teens in between. And you've got people of all different races, all different backgrounds. And the people that Jesus said, make disciples of, I mean, they come in all different colors. Black, white, brown, yellow, orange. Certainly you've seen an orange person, haven't you? I have. I have. Many years ago, there was a person that wanted to get a tan, so they used that stuff that you got and you get in a tube. And they put it all over their body to make themselves have a tan. But they didn't have a tan. They turned out orange. You know, I couldn't wait for that stuff to wear off. It was horrible. I've never used it since. But anyway, you know, when St. Paul was in Athens, he said this. From one man, God has made every nation of humanity to live all over the earth. He has given them the seasons of the year and the boundaries within, within which to live. He has done this so that they would look for God, somehow reach for him and find him. You know, maybe God can use you to help bring somebody to Christ. Maybe God might use you to help make an individual a disciple of our Lord. Maybe we can show that we are Christians, if not by our love, but by the simple fact that we care. And Jesus makes disciples by water and the word. And as he sent those 11 out and the other disciples, guess what? It worked. There are people among all nations that are disciples of Christ, that have been baptized. And Jesus has given a promise to each and every one of us called to be a disciple. He says, Lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. And he is with you today to face whatever challenges you may have. He is with you today to help you bear whatever crosses you might have to bear. And he is with you today to encourage you and to remind you of the hope that is in your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. We do have some prayer requests for today, which I would like to announce. The altar flowers are given by the Brown family in memory of Jean Hintz Brown. And the eternal light is lit this week by Joe and Shirley Barillero in memory of Joe's father, Joseph A. Barillero. We also have prayers from Michelle Stein for Barbara Kessler Zimmer at the death of her brother Dave. From Arlene Jens for the owners of the shops that were looted and vandalized, that they may have strength and courage to start over. From Sue Brady, prayers for Russ, who is back in the hospital. And for all people to join and work together with law enforcement officers for a peaceful and cohesive unite to improve relationships and communities. From Peter Mason, prayers of thanksgiving for our church and the prayers we offered for him. He has now accepted a music teacher's position. From Cindy Vesicchio, prayers for George for healing as he begins chemo on Monday. 
from Sandy Boisford to Frey Felisa, who is in the hospital with heart, heart problems. From Sheila Robinson, her 24-year-old nephew was killed in a car crash on Wednesday in Florida, prayers for the family. And from Kathy Claps, prayers for her brother Al for healing after his surgery. Let us pray. Almighty God, you revealed your mighty power when you created all things, visible and invisible. You gave us life and blessed us. Continue to bless us today. Bless us with your presence, grace, and peace. We offer our prayers for those who are ill, lonely, or depressed. If it is your will, bless them with healing, companionship, and peace. Bless our families, especially as they face challenges in their lives. Help us all to be thankful for all that you give to us. Hear the prayers we offer to you within our hearts and minds in this moment of silence. Lord, we ask for comfort for those who mourn. Barbara at the death of her brother Dave. Sheila at the death of her nephew. We ask for healing for those who are ill. Russ, who is back in the hospital, for George as he begins chemo treatments, for Lisa in the hospital with heart problems, for Al following surgery that you may grant him with healing. And we pray for the owners of stores that have been looted and vandalized that they may start over. For all people to work together with law enforcement officers that we may improve relationships. And we thank you, Lord, for blessing Peter with employment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As you go forth in your lives, may the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And we end with the song, Father, I adore you.